I'm Elena Chernyshova, a documentary photographer, and I present you my series Days of Night, Nights of Day. Uh, it is about uh, Norilsk, a city that situates in Siberia, in Russia. So uh, on this uh, photo we have a view from a plane uh, and we can see just a tundra. Um, there is nothing around the city for thousand kilometers, just uh, like a sort of Arctic desert, and here we see a, ri a frozen river. And to go to, to go to Norilsk, we can we can reach it by boat by Arctic Ocean, or also uh, in in summer period by Yenisei River, or by plane. It's like four hours of flight from Moscow. The rich uh, deposits of um, of uh, cobalt, nickel, uh, copper, palladium were found uh, in Narilsk in the beginning of the 20th century. All the city, uh, its uh, mines and its um, factories were constructed by prisoners. So following some data, there are like over 500,000 people that came through, through these camps. Um, I had a chance to meet Anna Vasilyevna because she was one uh, of the prisoners and spent 10 years in the camp uh, during her youth from 19 to 29 years. And we can see a photo uh, when she was just after the liberation. Uh, Norilsk is one of the biggest uh, mining and metallurgical complex in the world. Over 40% of world palladium comes from Norilsk. Uh, and uh, like all what we have in our smartphones or for space industry, we are highly using palladium. Uh, there are wa one open mine um, that works like all around the year, even when it's minus 60, when it's no storm, it continues to work. And there are six underground mines um, like the total length of them is like 800 kilometers, like a huge city under the city. Um, here we can see a place of rest, uh, people playing domino. <laughs> um, in the melting department, conditions of work are quite hard because uh, it's very hot and there are a lot of uh, pollution uh, goes, and uh, workers have to breath with filter or with uh, special tubes that are linked to a coal filter to purify the air. Um, and uh, working conditions are hard for health. People have a uh, lot of uh, disease connecting with uh, breathing, with allergy, uh, eczema. Um, following some data, there, there are a lot of uh, cases of cancer and uh, people go uh, to retirement at the age of 45 or 50. It extracts uh, almost uh, two, uh, two millions of tons of uh, sulfur dioxide per year, uh, which is uh, almost like entire France. In the radius of 30 kilometers around the city, uh, tundra is uh, dead and uh, vegetation suffered a lot. Norilsk is the most polluted city in Russia and uh, following the Blacksmith Institute, it is the eighth most polluted city in the world. Nowadays, uh, Norilsk Nickel says that they are trying to uh, renovate uh, that, to, to renovate factories and to install some filters to uh, pollute less. Uh, here we see the main street uh, of the city, which calls Leninsky Prospect. And um, they are quite uh, ancient buildings that were constructed, uh, most of them by the prisoners. And uh, the general plan of Norilsk uh, was made by architects from St. Petersburg. Uh, at that time it was Leningrad. And, um, 
Norilsk inhabitants, they like to say that uh, they are living like in Saint Peter, Arctic Saint Petersburg. <laughs> but um, it's only one street has this particular beauty, and a lot of buildings uh, in Norilsk they look like this, made with a prefabricated panels, so it could be very fast uh, to construct them. Um, this kind of building were constructed for people who just uh, arrived to Norilsk, uh, new workers. Um, one, like here, one, one window uh, corresponds to one flat, and the flat is around uh, between 12 and 17 meters square. Um, but actually people have to live there two months, three months, and after the government gave them another flat. Um, after the collapse of uh, USSR, there was no more fi fi finance to continue the construction of these buildings, and so they, were s they stay like this, like more than 20 years now, completely empty, like uh, ghost buildings. Um, mines and uh, factories are situated around the city and to go there we have like to do a road 20-30 kilometers. And um, during uh, strong snow storms it's very dangerous to go by a personal car uh, because uh, there are open tundra spaces and so a lot of wind, a lot of snow, the visibility can be very low, so it's simply dangerous for life. And uh, so during snow storms there are this kind of a bus, co con con convoy of bus that are organized, like uh, 20 buses together that bring people from the city to work and from work to the city. Mm. Okay. Um, the climate in Norilsk is um, extremely hard and uh, winter is uh, nine months. Um, and so on this photo it was like minus 40 and uh, when it's too, so cold there are a lot of steam that goes from a um, heating system um, and for two months, the uh, city um, is covered by a polar night, so the sun doesn't go above the horizon and uh, it is dark. Maybe for two hours there are some soft twilights, but it stays quite dark. So, like, we really live in obscure um, places. Yeah, almost in every flat uh, people have a um, lamp that imitates the daylight. Uh, a lot of people have uh, winter gardens, a uh, lot of flowers because there is a strong lack of vegetation. On this photo we can see that the uh, window is uh, completely frozen because it is uh, an old, uh, old uh, frames in wood. And I think there was a problem with um, ventilation, so a lot of condensation on, on the window. Um, and people say, said that uh, as soon as it was cold, they were living like in a frozen cave because the window was frozen and for nine months they have this ice. <laughs> uh, so in children's garden, um, there is a, a table uh, where we can compare the um, temperature with the force of uh, wind. And so only with a certain like, definition it is allowed for children to go outside. So sometimes during um, one month or even two months the children they, they no, don't go outside to play because it is uh, or very cold or too much strong wind so it is dangerous. And we can see here an empty playground <laughs> during the polar night. Uh, 
um, inhabitants of Norilsk says that the best way to adapt themselves to cold is um, to go and to swim outside in a cold water. And more it's cold, better it is. <laughs> and so there is a lake, uh, Dolge, and um, four times a week uh, people come there to swim uh, in ice water and after they warm themselves in a, in a small sauna, which is situated nearby. During the period of a polar night, um, it's usually also very cold at this moment, and so all uh, daily life happens like in a closed spaces. Um, and the pe people are practicing a lot of sport. The most famous are figure skating and uh, gymnastic. For, for young people, uh, it's quite uh, hard sometimes to live in Norilsk. Uh, they say that it was not their choice to, uh, to come to Norilsk and to live there, but it was choice of their parents and they were just uh, born there. Uh, but they are really fond of um, modern music and uh, so they organize with um, administration uh, parties which calls uh, mechanica, mechanica, like um, something very mechanic and it's one of the most uh, trendy parties in, the <laughs> in Norilsk, as you can see here. Mm. From the end of uh, May till the end, until the end of July, um, there is a polar day, and I think it's one of the best uh, period in Norilsk. Uh, it is warm and uh, light is here for like all day long. On this photo, uh, it's, it is uh, four, uh, four o'clock in the morning, but yeah, full, of, full of light and there is nothing, nothing actually on, on the buildings, there is nothing to protect from the sunlight. In some flats we can see um, tight uh, curtains, but the uh, majority of people, they don't put anything, they say we are in habit. <laughs> here, here we are on the, um, on the shore of uh, Dolge Lake. Uh, it is a technical lake uh, that is used by a um, power station to, to, cool, uh, to cool the power station. And this, uh, this is a system that sprinkling the water. So it's cooling and go, goes to, to the lake after. Um, and when architects, they were creating a general plan of Norilsk, um, they were thinking that this area will be a zone of uh, recreation, that there will be a park, uh, some beaches, but in the end uh, nothing was realized following this plan, so it is like a quite industrial area. But uh, people come here to rest because it's quite far to go outside the city, uh, so they're doing the picnic, uh, barbecue, uh, swim in the lake or just taking a sun bath. They are really celebrating warm times and in the end of June there is a holiday uh, that called Harailach. Harailach, it's the name of a river outside of Norilsk and um, a lot of people of different age, they just come on that place, install uh, camps uh, and after like there are several teams and they are doing competition in climbing, in canoe, uh, in running, singing, things like this. They stay there during three days and each team has um, it's a um, way of dressing, it's uh, their song of a team and so on. And on this photo we can see uh, people who are dressed like uh, pioneers uh, during communist time. <laughs>
Лиза и Марика, и для того, кто выбрал трудный путь, она близка. And uh, it's more like a, a joke, uh, not really nostalgia, but more for fun. <laughs> to that we need. And um, around Norilsk is just a, a absolutely magnificent nature and very beautiful landscapes and mountains. Um, it is uh, the biggest paradox that I ever met, but uh, some people told me that they don't want to leave this city only because of its beautiful nature, um, that we can't really find uh, in other places, I think, of our Earth. And so during summer there are sort of like hiking or when people go for several days or several weeks in mountains. And just uh, 100 kilometers from the city uh, there is one of the biggest natural um, reserves in Russia, Putarane, which is less uh, investigated and uh, considered to be one of the most, the most beautiful in Russia and protected by UNESCO. <laughs> ah, this. Um, uh, so on this photo we can see children doing physical exercises and they are almost uh, naked. Um, and um, I got, uh, people gave me explanation that they do need to learn to resist the cold, so they do an exercise naked. <laughs> In spite of uh, all the problems, um, the um, demographical situation in Norilsk is uh, very good compared to other regions of Russia, and rates of birth are quite high. Mm, and the, the explanation is that there is uh, economical stability, so people maybe they don't have very high salaries, but at least it's uh, stable, and uh, there is a very good um, infrastructure, uh, children gardens, medical services are um, really well developed in Norilsk. The exhibition about Norilsk is the first time in Denmark, Copenhagen, and I'm really glad for a Copenhagen Photo Festival to invite uh, me and to show this, uh, to show this series, because it has been traveled a lot around the world, and. Uh, so it's great that now it's in Denmark and it gave me also an occasion to visit <laughs> Copenhagen for the first time. Mm, I really enjoy it. <laughs>